Now let's talk about the IETF management and the process by which they are selected. There's a number of roles that one could call management in the IETF. An IAB member, an IESG member, in other words, an area director, the IETF chair, an IOC member. Uh, they take a reasonable amount of time to uh, perform these roles. An IAB member's job is about third time. Area director's job is somewhere between half and three quarters time. An IETF chair's job is full time. An IOC member is about a fifth time. It's all two year terms, uh, selected by a nomcom for two years. All of these people are volunteers. The IETF does not reimburse expenses or salary. The people are, are, are compensated by their own companies. They pay for themselves or they pay for themselves. But the IETF does not pay for them. Secretariat and RFC publication and area, uh, IED are all paid for by the IETF, but the individuals who are doing all these very important jobs of actually managing the standards process, they're all volunteers. Well, in early days, the IETF management was picked by the chairs of the, IET, of the IAB and IESG, who were picked by themselves, pretty much. Uh, so it was a hereditary type environment. But since 1992, the members of the IESG and the IAB and the IETF chair have all been picked by a nominations committee, a nomcom. The Internet Society president picks the chair of the nomcom. That chair then puts out a call for volunteers for members of the nomcom, gets between 90 and 110 or so volunteers each, t each uh, year for membership in the nomcom. To be, to be selected, one has to have been at three of the last five face-to-face -face IETF meetings because they want to be sure you know how the IETF actually runs. In the early days, the first few nomcoms, the chair wrote down the names of the volunteers on slips of paper and put them in a hat and took them down to a local priest to choose amongst them to pick out the, the volunteers, the people who were going to be the voting members of the nomcom. <clears throat> but that was seen as too biased. Not quite sure who was biased there. Maybe the priest was biased. Maybe the non chair was biased. Or anyway, uh, one of the IETF members decided it was just not a random enough process. So he came up with an RFC 3797, which describes a extremely random process. Uh, you pick uh, values which are um, Things like, uh, this is the ones from 2015, the Canadian Lottery, uh, Lotto number 649, the digits of that, plus some digits of the U.S. public debt, plus the digits of the U.S. Gov intergovernmental holdings value, plus the Euro, Euro Millions Lottery, and you take some numbers from each of those and you concatenate them together and you get a very large random number and you use that as a seed for a random number generator, and then you use that random number generator to pick the folks the, off the volunteer list. It's overkill, but it works. It does. It gets the the, the membership of the the um, the nomcom. There are ten voting members of the nomcom. The chair is not a voting member. Nomcom gets a list of jobs to fill. Gets a list from the IATF chair for which area directors to be selected which people's terms are up and sometimes maybe is a new, a new area of director uh, required, an added one in an area, for example. Gets a list of IEB members that are, whose terms are up, and then gets a list of IAOC members whose terms are up. Uh, the, I, the job of the NOMCOM is to fit, f find people to fill those particular roles. The NOMCOM cannot reorganize the IETF, so the NOMCOM can't create new area directors or new areas or decide that some area doesn't need two area directors. The NOMCOM gets the set of s seats to fill. NOMCOM, after calling for volunteers and discussing them and going out and beating the bushes, uh, winds up with selecting a set of people for each of the um, roles. So we have uh, a set of a, 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 a slate of of, of nominees for the IEB, a slate of nominees for the IESG, an individual for the IETF chair, individuals for the IAOC. 
they're they're uh, per, they provided as slates for the IETF uh, for the um, IESG and for the IAB. The not review boards can decide whether to accept the whole slate or push back on one or more individuals in the slate. The IAB uh, nominees are reviewed bar reviewed and approved by the Internet Society Board of Trustees. The IAB reviews the selections for the area directors, in other words, for the IESG, and also for the IETF chair. And the IESG reviews and approves the nominations for the IAOC. The IETF management has no real authority other than the standards process itself. Uh, this is very much in long in the line of uh, the quote you have on the left, the power of the ruler is de delegated by the people and continues only with their consent. Uh, the IETF management cannot say what the IETF is going to do or what the opinion of the IETF is without going a, doing a consensus call to the IETF. So if a government authority or another standards organization asks the IETF for their opinion on something, the IETF chair can't give it an opinion. The IETF chair can say, well, We've discussed that, and this is what we can, the consensus we came to in the past, or I will send out a consensus call to see what they think. But the IETF management cannot speak for the IETF and that sort of thing, which means the IETF management can't uh, commit the IETF to do any particular function, like develop a particular standard. The worker bees that are actually going to do the work have to be the ones that decide that the work is going to get done. It is the case, though, that the IEF consensus is known in some cases, espionage work and things like that, where, where the IETF has undergone a consensus determination process, and in that case, the IETF management can talk about what consensus were already reached. They can talk about what consensus has been reached about technology and particular working groups if there has been such consensus. But beyond that, the, the IETF management um, is limited in what they can say. In particular, they can't commit the IETF for any particular action.